Welcome everyone to my YouTube series on how to create a PC gaming console. It seems that every time I talk to someone about PC gaming, their answer is usually the same. I sit at work all day and I at a computer screen and the last thing I want to do is go home and sit at a computer screen and play games. Listen, I totally understand that. I'm in the same boat. I also sit at a computer all day at work and I don't want to sit at a PC to play games either. Here's the thing though. You don't have to play PC games on a computer monitor. You can absolutely play these games on a television from the current comfort of your couch. With the right software and the right configuration setup, you can easily create the best, the very best gaming console on the market. Okay, so for me, a games console is about a lot more than just games. I want my games console to act like the central hub of my living room. The console needs to provide all of my TV shows, my music, my movies, my photos, my games. It needs to be controllable from nothing but a PC controller. No keyboard or mouse should be required to use this system. So here we are in my living room. You'll see in my TV stand a Nintendo Wii U, a PC gaming console, and my home theater stereo system. You'll notice the console is about the same size as an Xbox One gaming console. And what you don't see anywhere is a keyboard and mouse. This setup is, is controlled exclusively from an Xbox 360 controller, like this one, and a Microsoft MCE remote control, like this one. This one I use to control TV and to give us that DVR or cable sort of experience. Okay, when this particular machine starts up, it acts very similar to a DVR. You don't need a keyboard, you don't need a mouse, you don't need to log in. The system will automatically log in and will automatically load the Kodi Media Center. So that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. The machine has just been booted up. It's got the Kodi Media Center currently running. Okay. From Kodi, my family has access to everything they need. All of our movies, our music, our TV, our photos, games, everything. So what we're going to do here real quick to demonstrate some of that is we'll go to our TV shows and we'll take a look at some of the newest shows uh, that we've got on here. Uh, that's a good one, I think. So here we go. Okay, so we'll stop that and we'll show you, for example, movies. Uh, let's take a look at some of the newest movies that have been added onto this media center and uh, just pick one at random. So we'll just pick a movie and as you can see again, all of our media is on demand. Uh, anybody in the house can watch it, can view it. Um, it's instant, instantly available. Okay, so we'll turn this off and we'll back out of here and we'll go ahead and launch Steam through Kodi. Okay, so let's talk about Steam. What we're looking at here is called the Steam Big Picture Mode. And if you were to build a Steam OS machine or a Steam box as people refer to them, this is the user interface that that you should be familiar with or that you'll be using to, to use your system. Uh, just like the consoles, you know, Sony has the XMB and the Xbox has got its uh, Xbox operating system. This is essentially the operating system for a Steam box here. So uh, when we launch this particular app, this is going to give us access to the store. To buy new games, it'll let us watch trailers of upcoming games, um, things of that nature. Now, you can actually use this big picture mode to act as your front end for your games if you would like to. A lot of newcomers to PC gaming make a mistake in thinking that you can only play games that you got on Steam in Steam, and this is definitely not true. There's a feature in here called Add Non-Steam Game to Library. 
okay? That feature lets you add any game that you have into Steam, no matter where it came from, Origin or Uplay or GOG or, or wherever that game may have come from. So it lets you add these games into this system and they appear just like any other game. You can pick the artwork for them. You can make them all look fancy. Um, a, lot of, a lot of functionality. And in fact, if you're looking at the screen here, you see there are a lot of games that have no artwork on them. That's a case where I have another gaming PC running somewhere else in my house that do have those games installed. And basically, if I were to pick one of those games, it would actually just stream the game from the other gaming PC to this gaming PC. But, you know, if you use Steam, if you, if you want to use Steam to act as your front end, it's really tedious. Let me just warn you up front, guys. It's, it's tedious. So, you know, our, our family, we don't use Steam to play our games or anything like that. We only use Steam to watch trailers and to buy new games. We don't. It's not our front end. It's not something that we use very often. But I wanted to show it to you because if you were okay with having to add all your games one at a time and figuring out all the commands to run and doing all that legwork and getting all the graphics and all that stuff, if you want to do all that work, you certainly can do all that work and you can make the Steam Picture Big Picture Mode act like your gaming front end for this particular console. But that's not how we're going to do it. So let me get out of the big picture mode here. Get back into Cody. Okay, so we are going to launch a front end called Big Box. It makes a lot of sense for a PC gaming console to use a launcher, okay? We're using the Launchbox Big Box Launcher to manage our games. In the scene, this is what's known as a front end, okay? Which basically just means that it's an app that launches other apps for you. There's a lot of front ends out there. You can use Hyperspin, Retro FE, Mala. You can even use the Steam Big Picture mode to act as your front end. I personally like Big Box because it's so simple to use and it's so simple to manage. My wife and my five-year-old son and seven-year-old daughter, they all use this thing every day. They have no trouble with it. It works great for them. Uh, so this is the one that we're using. So we're going to navigate down to Windows Games. Now, one of the very interesting things about this system is... You'll notice that when we are scrolling through the list of games, we see these video clips. These video clips are really neat. It's just, that's a killer app that is just a fantastic feature of this particular front end. If you've got family over, you've got friends over, you, um, you know, you've got colleagues over, whatever the scenario is, you know, they can load up Big Box using the remote control or the, or the, uh, Xbox 360 controller, they can browse through the games, they can watch the videos of the games that you have running on the machine to see whether or not it's something that they would necessarily like to play. So we're just going to go ahead and pick a game here and we will fire that game off. This game may take a little bit to load because I've got a UMB and a several mods installed for this particular game but it should load without issue okay and we're just gonna load up a game here just to show that everything is working the way that it's supposed to work And it looks like it loaded just fine. So let's just take a run. All right. And everything looks good. Running smooth, smooth as silk. Okay, so we can go ahead and quit out of this game. Oh, 
Okay. All right. So you'll notice here in big box that I've got a system spinner wheel. Okay. That's this thing here moving up and down. This is one of those kind of killer app deals where once you use it, you just can't imagine going back to the way you used to do things. In this particular setup, I have all my Sega Dreamcast, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Nintendo GameCube, Nintendo Wii, PSP, and PC games all set up. It didn't take very much effort either to set this up because the LaunchBox program will scrape all the data related to all of your games from the internet for you so you don't have to enter any data manually or any of that sort of thing. So, very awesome feature. So we're gonna pick a, another system at random here. So we'll pick something like, I don't know, PlayStation 2. And what do we got? Oh, okay, I see a couple games here I really like. So we'll pick something like Persona 4. And we see the PlayStation of PS2 is booted. So here's where things get really interesting. For me, my family, the real killer app of this gaming console is the emulator stuff. I mean, we've spent dozens, maybe hundreds of hours playing all of our old GameCube, Wii, PS2 games, uh, you know, just having an absolute blast. I mean, it's it's really a feature that you can't get anywhere else. And in my opinion, it justifies the cost of building a gaming PC. So, anyways. I'll turn this down a little bit. Okay, uh, the point of the video that I'm trying to do here is I want to demonstrate to you guys, to everybody out there, that a PC gaming console can and does exist. It really does. I, and it's, it's a killer console. I mean, it is absolutely amazing what you can do with an open system where there isn't a vendor standing over you, controlling all the aspects of what can and can go on the box. Anything you can dream of, you can implement in a system like a PC. Uh, so it, it really is a the best of all worlds, in my opinion. So uh, the other big point I want to key at here is, you know, you don't need a keyboard and mouse. I mean, 90% of all the games out there work with a controller. They typically will work with a controller out of the box with no setup, no hassle, no, no work that you have to do. You just plug it in and, and you're off and running. There are some games like Civilization, Mass Effect 2, Dragon Age, thing, games like that, you know, that are really designed for keyboard and mouse that don't really lend itself very well to this setup. But there are options for those games like the Steam Controller. You can bring a Steam Controller into the mix and play those games here on the couch as well. So there are options there. The other really important point, it's really important to understand that, you know, you're not locked in, you know, it, a Steam box is not about playing Steam games, right? It's about playing games, period. So even though you've got Origin and Steam and you playing Battle.net and Games for Windows Live and GOG and a million other launchers out there, you can configure your front end to bypass all that stuff or to automate that stuff so that you don't have to use a mouse, open the client, go to the client, launch the game, kick off, you know, you don't have to do that. You know, you can use a single front end, that single front end can manage all of your games and you just click a button and your game is playing. End of story, done, uh, no, 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 no fuss, no hassle. So in the next video, I'm going to start walking you guys through the process of creating a gaming console like this. So if this is something you're interested in, you can follow along and you can build the gaming system of your dreams. I'll lay out all the specs. I'll lay out all the components I put in there. I'll you know, document exactly how you set all this up. Um, there is a little bit of work up front that you have to do. There's a little bit of hassle, but once you've done it, and once you've got it set up, it really is an impressive, impressive setup. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if, uh, if you did stick around, leave me a comment, let me know. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll work on another video if people seem to, uh, to want another one. So, anyway, thank you for watching.